Good morning, everybody. Say good morning, Southie. Good morning. It's so great that Southie's here with us this morning at the beginning of the lesson. We have some very fun things planned to do with you today. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Sunday. It's so beautiful and it's sunshiny. I hope you have time to go outside and play today. It'll be so super fun. Do you like to play outside, Southie? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I bet she does because that's what sheepies like to do is be outside, right? Right, except for when she comes and is doing our lessons with us. Yeah. All right, so today, Southie, we are going to be in the Gospel of Mark. Do you remember where Mark is in the New Testament? In the beginning. In the beginning, that's right. It's the second of the four Gospels. You want to say the Gospels with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Matthew, Matthew Mark, Mark, Luke, Luke John. John. Good job, Southie. High five. Yeah. yeah, that was awesome, Southie. So we're going to be in the Gospel of Mark today, and we are going to talk about following the Messiah. Okay, so we're going to talk about what Messiah means as we go through our lesson. So before we get started today, Southie and I are going to play a little game, and I'm going to ask Southie some questions. But at home, I want you to answer too, and your answers can be different than Southie, and that's okay. All right, so I have some things for you. I have a basketball, and I have a game system, a Nintendo Switch. Do you like to play the Switch, Southie? Yeah. Yeah, Southie likes to play her Switch. It's amazing. So, Southie, which one of these would be easier if you had to give one of them up? Which one would be easier? To give up? To give up and oh. never, ever do again, ever. Uh, basketball. Basketball. I sort of knew you were going to say that. Okay. I had to think about it, though. You could do a lot of things with the basketball. This is true. This is true. Okay, so candy and Coke or Pepsi. This is Pepsi mm. if I turn it around the right direction. Southie, I know you like candy, but I also know you like caffeine too, mm. right? So if you had to give one of them up, which one would it be? Mm, soda. Soda. So she's going to keep the candy. That's yeah. right. We share the candy. Yes, we'll definitely share the candy. Yeah. Okay, Southie. Toys. Mm. Would you give up stuffed animals or toys? It's a real cool truck. This hard one. This is really um, hard. Um, I guess the toy. The toy you're gonna keep poo? Yeah, you go for keep cuddles. Poo. poo is so cute. I love poo. Easier to sleep with. Okay, <laughs> last one. Movies or books. It's a really big book. Ooh. Ooh. Which one if you had would be harder? Which one would you give up? And which one would be the hardest to give up? Uh, I think movies. You ready? You would be okay with giving up movies? Well, there's a lot of books. There are a lot of books. You're right. There's so much. Okay, Southie. So today, the reason I went through and said, which things would you be willing to give up and which things would be really, really hard to give up is because we're going to talk about sometimes the things in the world like movies and toys and candy and coke and video games and basketball or just sports all sports or all books or all movies sometimes it's really hard to give those things up oh yeah yes but we're going to talk about why that matters and what does that have to do with jesus and southie do you know what your soul is like not like the soles of your feet <gasps> yeah like in your heart the part of you that lives forever Whoa. wow isn't that amazing That's a long time that is a long time forever i can't even really i don't really understand forever do you no no it's forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever exactly I can't even figure that out. But our soul, that part of us that's inside that God made, will live forever. And it is more valuable than any movie or any sport or any candy or any toy. Right? Do you believe that? Yeah. Yeah, you do. For sure. And we're going to realize and we read this story that God can give us the faith. 
if we need to let go because sometimes stuff keeps us from being able to keep our eyes on Jesus. Like last week. That's right, Southie, with our big eyes, right? Remember we had our big silly eyes? Yes, it keeps, sometimes stuff keeps us from keeping our eyes on Jesus. But we have to remember that our soul will live forever and ever 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 until I run out of breath, right? So we have to figure that out and learn from God's word what happened. And where can our soul go? And how do we follow Jesus to where he is? Okay, okay. so we're in Mark chapter 8. So you okay. want to go get your Bible out? Yeah, I'll go get it. Move okay. On. All right. I'll see you in a little bit. All right, so we're going to be reading in verses 27 is where we're going to start. And we're only going to read two verses right now. And then we're going to stop and talk about it a little bit. And I'm going to try to explain very carefully because sometimes a little bit of this story is a little hard to understand. So we're going to talk about it a lot so we get it, okay? All right, so starting in verse 27 of chapter 8. Here we go. Jesus went out along with his disciples to a place called Caesarea Philippi. That's a lot of words. On the way, he questioned his disciples and he said to them, who do people say that I am? His disciples said, Some say that you're John the Baptist. Others say Elijah. And others say, I don't know, one of the other prophets. And Jesus asked his disciples, he said, But who do you say that I am? And Peter, one of the disciples, said, You are the Christ. An amazing answer by Peter. Okay, so I have a lovely picture here, and I wanted to show you what Caesarea Philippi looks like because it's a land of beautiful trees and grasses and beautiful sparkling waters. There's waters and waterfalls. It's just very, very beautiful. So Jesus brings his disciples up here, right, because they've been feeding the 5,000 or 200,000, and they've been healing people, and he just wants to bring them up here and give them a nice place to relax. This is in the, so they've been on the side of the Sea of Galilee. They're going to go up to the top in the north is where Caesarea Philippi is. And they're just going to have some teaching time with Jesus. Just them and Jesus. And it is so amazing that he brings them here. And on the way while they're walking, he's like, you guys are listening to all these crowds because there's big crowds following them all the time. And he says, who do these people say that I am? And they're like, well, some said you're Elijah, which is a prophet from the Old Testament. And some say you're John the Baptist, which remember we learned about John the Baptist baptized Jesus, right? Back when we first started doing lessons together, it was like right the first lesson we talked about. So John baptized Jesus. So some people said, oh, and by this time, John is dead. But we skipped that part of the story. But I just wanted, so John is dead. So that's why people thought that he might be um, back alive and that Jesus was actually John, but he's not. He's Jesus, right? And then some of his disciples said, I don't know who they say you are. They're just saying one of the prophets from the Old Testament, right? So I'm going to ask my best friend in the whole wide world if she can come back in and help us just to understand this a little bit and why this matters so very much. So we're going to play a little game called Who Is It? And how should we respond to them is the rest of the game. But that doesn't sound as neat as just who is it. Okay, so I have a picture up here for you. Ready? All right, Southie. I'm ready.
I'll see you in a minute. Okay. Okay, so these people, we don't, we know what they do. We know what the police officer does and the doctor and the traffic director, right? So that's what Jesus is asking his disciples. He's saying, who do the people that are listening to me say that I am? So he's trying to get the disciples to think and to think about what he, they're hearing. And then he wants to know what they think. But why did the people, so remember he went and he talked to Jews and jo Jews know the Old Testament very well, right? Right. So he goes and he's talking to his disciples and asking, who do these people think I am? So that's why some of them are answering from prophets from the Old Testament, like Elijah, right? Elijah was a prophet in the Old Testament. Elisha, his name sounds very similar, is a prophet from the Old Testament. But the first one we're going to talk about is John the Baptist, and he was in the New Testament, remember?
in Mark chapter 8. Okay, are you ready? So we just read 27 and through 29, so we're going to start in verse 30 this time. And we're going to read three verses together. And he, Jesus, we're going to talk about this. He warned them to tell no one about him. Hmm, why did Jesus do that? Okay, verse 31. And he, Jesus, began to teach them that the Son of Man himself would have to suffer things and be rejected by the elders, by the chief priests, by the scribes, that group of mean Pharisees that we've, we talked about a few weeks ago. Those are the people he's talking about. And be killed. And after three days, rise again. All of this that he's telling to them, they're not used to. We hear this all the time, so we're used to hearing what happened to Jesus. But his disciples, this would have been very shocking to begin hearing. All right, let's finish reading. 32. And he was stating the matter plainly. I love that Jesus states the matter plainly. Sometimes I need to hear it just straight up. That's the way I need it. And that's what this says. And Peter took him aside. Peter. Oh, Peter, you answered so well just a couple of verses ago. And Peter began to rebuke him. Kind of like scold him. You know when your mom shakes your finger at you like we've talked about? It's kind of what Peter was doing there. He's just asking questions. He's like, what? I don't understand. What? What? Jesus, why are you saying these things? Because he didn't want those things to happen to Jesus. Verse 33, but turning around and seeing his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, this is very strong words, get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on God's interest, but man's. Dun, dun, dun. That's just crazy. Okay, so back to verse 30. Why did Jesus tell them to be silent? Because he was not, they did not completely understand Jesus' mission and what he was doing. So that's why he's like, just be silent. I want you to learn more about your Savior and why I'm here, right? Because they have a big mission to carry on after Jesus goes through these things. So he needs them to learn, right? And they're not quite ready. And we see that with Peter. He did not like what Jesus said. But if Peter had been thinking, right, that's why the Bible always tells us to think, he would have been thinking about the Old Testament. In one of my favorite Old Testament books, Daniel 9, it says, after the 62 sevens, the anointed one, the Messiah, the Christ, will be...
if you wish to come after me, you must deny yourself, take up your cross. We just saw a picture of that cross, didn't we? And follow me. Does that mean that I got to go outside and cut down a tree and make a cross? No, we're going to talk about that. 35, for whoever wishes to save his life, this is a little bit confusing, but just listen, right? Will lose it. You can't lose your life. You can't, like, misplace it. And he's not saying, I get, like, I misplace stuff all the time and I can't find it. That's not what he's talking about, okay? But whoever loses his life for my sake, for Jesus' sake, and the gospels, right, will save it. For what do you gain? What profit do you get? What money do you get? What's the point for the whole world and forfeit or lose your soul. Remember we talked about your soul as the part of you that lives forever and ever 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 and ever. Okay. Verse 37. For what will a man give in exchange for his soul? So that's what we were talking about in the beginning with Southie. What is the thing that you don't want to give up, that you want to hold on to, even though you know it causes you to sin? What is that thing you just can't let go of? Okay. Verse 38. For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in the glory of his Father with his holy angels. Isn't that the coolest verse in the whole wide world? Wow! The glory of his Father with the holy angels. Wow! I just can't wait to see the glory of Jesus and God and angels. I can't even imagine. But anyways... Back to our verse. All right, Southie's going to come back in. We're going to play a fun game. Okay, Southie, I just was talking with the kids that if we want to follow Jesus, we have to live like he did, and we have to do what Jesus says to do, right? We have to live like Jesus. Like Jesus. That's right. Okay, so to help us make this point, we're going to play follow the leader. <gasps> Yes, so whatever I do, Southie's going to do. You ready? You okay, ready, I'm, I'm so ready. Okay, here we go, Southie. Good job, Southie. <laughs> Southie is very good at jumping. Yes, she is. Can you clap? Sorry, Southie I gets got distracted. distracted. I had a feeling you got distracted. That's okay, Southie. Let's go. Let's see. <laughs> I love you, Southie. You're my favorite. Thanks. You're so great. Did you see Southie playing Follow the Leader? Isn't that so fun? Yeah. It's so fun. Okay, so just like Southie was doing whatever I did and Follow the Leader, we have to live and do whatever God tells us in his word, right? In his word, that's right. We have to be humble. That's really hard. That means low, empty, not thinking about ourselves all the time, right? We have to stop wanting to please ourselves, but please Jesus. We have to trust that he knows best because he does. We have to be willing, like this verse said right here, to take up our cross and follow him wherever he goes. That's really hard, Southie. But you said we don't have to build a cross. Yeah, but we don't have to build a real cross. No. But what do you think that means? Uh, maybe something like do what Jesus does. That's right, because Southie. Jesus took up his cross. That's right. So taking up our cross is not some big, we got to go out and cut down trees and every day we got to go make a new cross and pick it up and carry it somewhere. No, oh. that'd be crazy. Wouldn't that'd it? be, I'm very weak. I'd be tired. That'd be very tiring. So it means we just pick up God's word and we read it and we talk to him and we pray and we do what we know pleases him. And that's really hard because sometimes we want to please ourselves mm. and that's really hard. And we want to have our stuff and 
Sometimes we get lost in our stuff and we forget that Jesus has something for us to do, right? Mm. Right. But what this it, end of this verse is say that you can lose your whole soul. That sounds crazy. Whoa. And God's word says there's lots of stuff in the world, mm -hmm. but what are you going to do with it when you're not here anymore? I mean, nothing. Yeah, you nothing. It's the here and you're not here. Exactly, right? So that's what all those verses mean. It's so hard to understand. And sometimes, sometimes we have to really like think so hard. But Jesus is really just saying, follow me and keep my commands. Stay in my love. Just as he kept God's commands and he remained in God's love. And that's what John 15 says. I really, really love that verse so much. So, Southie, here's a question. After we've talked about it, do you believe that your soul will last forever and oh, ever? Yeah. And ever? Yeah, ever, forever and ever and ever and ever. And do you believe that it's the most valuable thing in the whole world? Well, yeah, that's what the Bible says. That is what the Bible says. That's what this whole so section was about, right? Yeah. So we have to follow Jesus because he's the Messiah. What does Messiah mean? What do you think the Messiah means? Hmm. Maybe like Savior? Yep, that's what it means. Hmm. He's the Savior because you can't save yourself, right? No. So Jesus did that. Colossians says, in Jesus all the fullness of God is in, was do, inside of Jesus' body. Whoa. It's just amazing. So we follow Jesus because he's the Messiah. We follow Jesus because he died and he conquered death, right? Yeah. 1 Corinthians says he was buried, but he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. And you know, that's the part that Peter missed when he was listening to this. If he had been listening to all that Jesus had said, he would have realized that Jesus said, it's going to get bad. And it's going to get real bad, right? Mm. Jesus had to go through horrible stuff. Terrible, 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 terrible mm. stuff because of sin. But then he missed, Peter missed Jesus saying, but I will rise on the third day because he showed his power over death completely. Even though he had already raised people from the dead, nobody had ever raised himself. So he was showing a difference. Because Elisha raised somebody from the dead, and Jesus raised a different person from the dead, but Jesus was the first and only person to bring himself back to life. Whoa! Wow. It's just amazing, because yeah. he has the power over all of creation. Whoa. Well, he did make it. He did make it. That's good. That's, my, that's where we go back to the book of... Genesis. So good. So good. All right, so we follow Jesus because he's the Messiah. Mm. We follow Jesus because he died and conquered death. Yeah. We follow Jesus and not ourselves. Oh, Ooh, that's hard, right? Oof. Oof. Yeah. If anyone wishes to come after me, you have to deny yourself. Take up that cross. I love that word in Luke. Daily. Daily, 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 daily. You've got to fight the fight of sin every day, right? All right. So we follow Jesus because we get to live with him. And ever 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 and ever, 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 right? So if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Mm. Hmm, pretty great, isn't it? Yeah. So we've talked about today. Jesus was talking with his disciples and he was talking with the people. He was teaching them and he's saying, if you want to be with me, this is what you have to do. So I'm leaving you with that same thought this week, my friends out there, kiddos, moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas, and everybody else listening, is we have talked about Jesus, and he's teaching his disciples, but he's also teaching us. So my question is, is there anything that you love more than Jesus? Is there anything you don't want to give up to follow Jesus, right? Study this week. Moms and dads, I encourage you to sit down with your sweet kiddos this week and go to Luke 12 and look up the story of the rich man who had a whole bunch of riches, and he was real happy with his riches. So he built bigger somethings to keep all of his riches inside of. And then look and see what happened to him. 
that soul that he had that was going to live on forever and ever 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 something happens to it. So read that Luke 12 this week. And remember, you guys, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, right? But we got to do something. We got to think, we have to read, and we have to follow, okay? And there's blessings of being a follower of Jesus, but you have to actually follow. And to follow, you've got to surrender your whole life and let Jesus have control. Because I don't, I can't do it right anyways. I make a mess of just walking across the street sometimes. Mm. Some days are just that way. Yeah, some days are hard. That is. All right, Southie, we're going to pray, and then we'll be at the end of our lesson this week. Woo! Woo-hoo! Okay, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you that you came and you loved us enough to teach about yourself and to give us a way to come to you. Thank you. I pray this week, Jesus, that you help us to think about our sin and you help us to be honest with you and ourselves about how much we love things or we love certain some things more than we want to love and to serve you. Help us to think about those things. And I encourage our moms and dads to sit down and talk to us about those things and what might be that we might love more than you, Jesus. I pray that we get take care of that and to think and to pray and to talk together in your precious name. Amen. 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 We love you and we miss you and go play follow the leader with your brothers and sisters or your moms and dads and do crazy things together and have fun and play hopscotch or something. Have a good day, you guys. Bye. 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 Bye.